In this video, I will show you how to develop cross-platform GTK applications using C Sharp and .NET. GTK is a GUI toolkit, also called the GIMP toolkit, which is mostly used on Linux desktops. It is open source and also cross-platform, and that means that you can also use it on Windows or Mac OS. In this video, we will mainly focus on Windows and Linux. I will show you an example project. We will build it, run it and debug it on those two platforms. But before we get into it, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. As always, all the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I'm here on the official GTK website and it says work with the language of your choice. And as said in this video we will use C Sharp, but there is no C Sharp down here. When you think about GTK, you don't usually think about C Sharp, so this mix is a bit exotic. But there is one project that brings those two together, which is called Mono. Mono is an open source substitute for .NET Framework and it also includes something called GTK Sharp. GTK Sharp makes GTK libraries and APIs available in C Sharp. And a nice thing is that it's not only limited to Mono, you can also use it with .NET development frameworks. .NET is also available on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. So it would be nice to use GTK together with .NET on all three platforms. And that's what this video is about, so let's go to Visual Studio. I'm now here inside Visual Studio, the IDE, but you can also use Visual Studio Code if you want. And I prepared a few projects here. All of those projects are .NET 8 projects, you can see it here, .NET 8. And this one in particular, the GTK project, uses GTK Sharp. If you want to use GTK Sharp, you have to install a specific Nugget package. It's really easy to do. Just right click on it, manage Nugget packages, go to browse and search for GTK Sharp. This is the one, click on it and install. I already installed this one and it's here under installed. Here it is. Once it's installed, you're good to go. So let's close that. Let's run the project. Let's see what it is. GTK and let's run it. Here it is, a simple GTK application running on Windows. This application just loads random names, IDs and images from a random API on the internet and displays it here inside this grid, I called it employees. Now what you can do here, you can click on a random employee and change for instance the ID and the name. And then you can do the same for a different one. Let's try to change a bit. And then up here you can see the undo button, which obviously undoes the changes, and a redo button, which redoes the changes. And then there is also the about button, which, if you click it, displays a simple message box with a description. This is obviously an undo redo example. Then the path to the file that is currently executed, the platform, which is Windows, and a simple message from the random API, which is very random, as you can see. Maybe this GUI seems a bit familiar. And it is, because this is the same GUI that I used in a previous video and now recreated in GTK. The original GUI was Windows Forms and WPF and in the previous video I show you how you can debug those in WSL on Linux. Yes, Windows Forms and WPF on Linux, you heard that right. If you are interested how that works, you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now, by the way, you can find those here inside Visual Studio, Windows Forms and WPF. For instance, let's take a look how WPF looks like. This is the same GUI in WPF. But let's focus on GTK. Let's switch that, GTK. A nice thing about Visual Studio and .NET is that it works very well together with WSL, which is Windows subsystem for Linux. It's really easy to install WSL on Windows, you just need to call this command right here in PowerShell as administrator and you should be good to go. This will configure everything and also install Ubuntu in WSL. 
In this video, I will assume that you already installed WSL on your machine and that you have a Linux distribution running. In that case, we can go back to Visual Studio. And if I go to this drop down up here, then you should see WSL. So let's select it. And now if I run it, we get the same GUI. Everything should still work. Undo and redo. But it looks a bit different. Let's check about. Also, the message box looks a bit different. And if we look down here, we can see that this one is actually running on Linux. So this one is now running in WSL and the GUI is displayed on Windows. This is one of WSL features that you can run Linux applications and display the GUI on Windows. This one is now using the .NET version 8, which is installed on Ubuntu. And it also uses the native GTK libraries on Ubuntu. Ubuntu is my WSL distribution that is running right now. Another interesting thing that you can see here is that we are using the same DLL that we also used on Windows. This basically means that you can just copy-paste your application from Windows to Linux and just run it there as it is. Let me demonstrate something. I will open the build folder, open folder in File Explorer. This is the project folder and I will go to bin, debug, net8 and now here is the gtk dll and gtk exe now in here i will open the terminal and now inside powershell i will execute net and gtk.dll and this now started the application on windows if i go to about as you can see this one is running on windows and that's okay now i will run wsl I'm now logged in in WSL inside the same folder. And now again, I will call .NET and GTK DLL. This is .NET inside WSL and not inside Windows, but GTK DLL is the same file. So let's run this one. And now here, it is the very same application, but this time it is running on Linux. So copy pasting to a Linux machine should work as well. Now let's see if we can debug this one. Let's make a breakpoint here in the constructor of the view and let's run it in WSL. And yes, we hit the breakpoint and now we can just F10 to step over or step out, Shift F11, again step out and let's continue F5. So debugging also works as expected. Let's close that. The last thing that I will show you is something more GTK specific, and it is the Glade file, which is an XML file that describes the GUI elements. In GTK, the GUI is described using those files. You can, of course, edit the file manually, which is not easy to do. Or there is also a visual designer application for it, also called Glade. Since GTK is mostly used on Linux, Glade is also a Linux program. So the easiest thing to do if you're using Windows is to install it in WSL. And that's also what we will do. I will open my WSL console. And in here, if you're using Ubuntu, just do apt install Glade. And that's it. Glade is installed. Now let's add it to Visual Studio. Right click on the Glade file and go open with go to add the program is actually wsl.exe because we will run glade inside wsl friendly name i will call it glade and for the arguments the first argument is glade and for the second one we need to convert the windows file path to wsl file path and one important thing this will work only for a file path that doesn't have spaces in it so if you have a file name that contains spaces or if the file is inside a folder that contains spaces, this will not work. So let's go OK. Here it is. And now I will set it as default and OK. And it opened the Glade file. So this file is called employeeview.glade, the one that we opened in Visual Studio. Let's just try it again. Double click the Glade file. And here it is. Now, just to demonstrate that it works, I will make the image column invisible and save the Glade file. And now run the application again. 
Again, we hit the breakpoint. Let's remove this one and continue. And now we have the application without the image column. Let's see if it works. Undo, redo, and about. All right, everything works fine. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. In a previous video, I also showed you how you can develop C++ and C# -sharp combo applications using WSL. So if you want to develop C++ and C# -sharp cross platform applications yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.